Six for Leach sees Glamorgan skittle for 139. Ed Barnard once again put in a wonderful effort with the bat to rescue Worcestershire from 63 for 5. His 131 guided them to 271. And then Joe Leach opened up with a three-wicket blast to reduce Glamorgan to 32 for 3 and leave the visitors on the back foot heading into day two. The start was delayed by rain, but Joe Leach was let off the leash early and swiftly had five to his name. Northeast bowled for nine, a peach from Leach. And then Carlson edged to Baker for a first baller. Root denied the hat-trick, 50 on the board soon, Glamorgan trying to recover, but the pressure the pairs had built told. Morris found the edge, Root out caught behind for nine. Byram had stuck in there with wickets tumbling around him and finally found a partner in Cullen that would do the same, some stability for Glamorgan. They hit back at the hosts, bringing the 100 up just before lunch. Cullen shot around the corner for four, just out of reach of Roderick behind the stumps. But that's where the partnership came to an end, Leach with his sixth. Cullen caught by Pollock at first slip. Nisa's innings short-lived, bowled by Barnard by way of an ill-advised leave, a deserved wicket for the pair's all-rounder. Glamorgan headed in for lunch at 114 for eight, seven more needed to avoid a potential follow-on. They ticked those off with relative ease, Spyram still at the forefront of the fight back and up to 50 as he scampered three off Morris, a deserved reward for his efforts. Glamorgan were down to their last wicket when Salter flicked Barnard's to fell to depart for 15. They were still trailing by 132, and they couldn't add any more to the total. Byram outcaught by Leach off the bowling of Pennington for what could prove to be a crucial 57, but in truth, the pairs were in pole position, leading by a substantial number, largely thanks to that impressive display of bowling from Leach, who finished with 6 for 44. As in the first innings, Glamorgan struck early, and it was another disappointing return for Ed Pollock, outcaught by Lloyd off the bowling of Hogan. The early wobble was temporary. The pairs regrouped with Libby and Ali, both unfurling some sumptuous shots. 50 up under their watch, the lead heading towards 200 at T. It was beyond that mark soon enough after the break, Libby playing the supporting role, Azure Ali up into the 40s. Libby was hot on his heels, the score now heading for 100, and Glamorgan was slipping further behind. They picked up the wicket that had eluded them for so long. Ali denied a half century, caught behind off Hogan for 42. He would watch on from the dressing room as Libby cut Salter to the boundary to bring up the 100. Disaster though for Libby, just one more needed when Hogan found his pads, and up went the umpire's finger, out LBW for 49. Soon it was Fell's turn to fall, Cullen with the catch, Nisa with the wicket, and Glamorgan handed a bit of hope late on day two. Dolivera joined him back in the dressing room, out caught by Northeast off the bowling of Nisa. A familiar feeling for the pairs now, in a bit of trouble with Barnard and Roderick at the crease. But there was no heroics from Barnard this time, out bowled for one by Nisa, Glamorgan surging with three overs left in the day. Roderick and Morris found their way to the close, the score 147 for six, and the lead now up to 279. They'll want to add to that tomorrow when they return to New Road, and time is on their side, even if they only have four wickets in hand. It's still Worcestershire's to lose, but Glamorgan, but Glamorgan are doing a great job of making it interesting. Those wickets early in the innings will give them heart, heading into the penultimate day.